You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. It is a beautiful day and I am grateful for you and you, Rob. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob and I'm grateful for you as well. Grateful for everybody that takes a few minutes out of their very busy days to spend it with us because uh, we know you have a lot of options and so we're very, very grateful that you're hanging out here and hopefully we give you some information that's useful to you. And if we do, tell people about it. We yeah, that social that. currency really helps everything out, and we would really appreciate your help in spreading the word about the show. Indeed. You could do that by leaving us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, Podomatic, not Podomatic, um, Overcast, or wherever you download shows, um, or you could share the show with a friend. We would greatly appreciate that. Um, today's show is brought to you by our upcoming Drone You Fly-In, which will be August 2nd through August 5th at Balloon Museum and Balloon Fiesta Park here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. It is a mission-based drone conference, so this is not the drone conference for you uh, you older gentlemen in your in your coats, in your, your red coats. Or you younger gentlemen in your coats. In your coats, in your no red monkey coats. suits allowed. That is uh, one of the uh, qualifiers. <laughs> Uh, yes. But there will come be, one, come all. There will be nine separate missions, from accident scene mapping to practicing dropping uh, life preservers on targets from a hundred feet up, to utilizing birds for inspections, to doing some subject tracking. There's so much going on. Yeah, to just hanging out with fellow pilots, learning from one another, learning the tricks of the trade that other people have figured out that you have maybe not be uh, familiar with yet. So it's really, really a cool event. And what's cool about this year is it's going to be open. So last year was members only, mm. right? Mm-hmm. This year, you don't have to be a member to come, but it is going to be limited in number. So what are we limiting it to? A hundred pilots, A hundred right? pilots. Yeah. 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 Because of all the flying that goes on and the logistics of that, obviously we've got to limit the number. True. So that's only where we're one hundred can go. Yeah. It is a competition. There will only be three winners. True. One will take home a new drone. The others, cash. Who will win? Who knows? But only one person will tell you. Mm-hmm. He is bald. His name is Bob. <laughs> <laughs> and registration information will be out very soon. Yeah. Still finalizing some of the details on that, but uh, isn't it, it'll be out quick. Isn't it droneyouflyin.com? I believe it is. Okay, but it's not yeah, ready yet. Yeah, but it's not ready yet. But so anyway. Don't in... go there. Stop. <laughs> I gave you the details. Oopsie. And so really quick, the webinar is tonight. You might want to just remind webinar people about that. Webinar is tonight. If you want to find out about how to grow your business, how to be better at sales, how to bring in those leads, and how to close those leads then you're going to want to check out that webinar uh link is below definitely want to check it out the fly-in page is definitely not updated as of nope. right now. <laughs> uh, but you're definitely going to want to check out the webinar uh it'll be out tonight if you're a member there will be a replay if you're not a member there's no replay this is definitely going to be one you don't want to miss because it's definitely going to help your confidence out it's going to transform you from someone like rob non-animated Someone like me, animated, full of wonderment. You sure you want that? <laughs> <laughs> be, full of excitement. Be careful what you wish for. True. No, actually, by the way, as it relates to the uh, the replay, um, non-members do have 48 hours to watch it, just FYI. But it's a very short window. Very short. So The shortest of windows. Short, yeah, anyway. Shortest of windows. All right. Let's hear today's question. I'm excited. Let's get to this. Hey, guys. How's it going? Uh, I'm a new member with Drone U. Uh, very happy with the subscription so far, so keep it up. Um, I just have a question today about uh, inspecting structures. So in particular, let's say a, a building facades. What's the best way to do this, whether it's a 3D model, a kind of a north of mosaic or just regular stills or video? And what do you see as the best software to catalog and document and provide access of the imagery to the clients. Thank you. 
Thank you for the question. Thank you for joining the, the membership at Drone. You are glad to have you and um, glad you're enjoying it. So a couple of questions here. One is the best way. I, it, what it sounds like is what kind of data to acquire, um, what your, your deliverable should look like to get people what they are going to be uh, find most useful, and then how to kind of store that and make sure that the client has it in a way that they can use it easily. Yeah. And I think that that has become a very big issue for a lot of people and is really how to deliver models to people who are not familiar with working on models. Um, I think people who are in the engineering, planning, uh, civil engineering, surveying, and GIS business are kind of used to working with models. Mm -hmm. So they typically ask for a very specific type of file, whether it's a DXF, an AutoCAD file, or if it's a um, point cloud file, the uh, .las or .laz file. Um, something that I have run across recently could be the answer for deliverables for your clients, and that's PIX4D model not hmm. PIX4D uh, processing software or PIX4D mapper. It's called PIX4D model. Hmm. And it's actually the exact same price as DroneU per month. Um, and what it does is it provides an online portal for your clients to go in and interact with maps. They can do measurements. They can do volumetric measurements. Um, you can do videos and export them to YouTube very quickly. So you um, can store things other than just models. I mean, you could store images in there if you want to. Right. Um, I'm not sure that you could do that. I know it offers some sort of cloud processing, but personally, I would not be cloud processing myself. What I would be doing is processing on the desktop and then trying to figure out, and I don't even know if this is possible, to be honest with you, uh, how to get that P4D or LAS file into PIX4 model, PIX4D model, uh, which by the way, I haven't used yet, but I am planning on using it this weekend. So, um, that being said, I'm really excited that this option is out there. I think this is why people have been using Drone Deploy mm -hmm. because Drone Deploy sucks at doing 3D models. It's great at doing 2D models, but what they do really, really well is um, deliverables and outputs and the PDF files they provide to people with annotations and explanations of volumetric measurements. But um, Pix4D has finally been like, okay, look, there's a problem. We get it. Here's the solution. Yeah. Um, although a subscription of every month, you know, I'm not sure if that's the best way to handle it because if you're paying $300 a month for software to run models in the background, um, you know, it's like, well, why can't I have a good way to deliver those as well? So, and I think that's why we've seen so many other mapping like companies pop up and offer their own processing. But again, with cloud processing, you're just so limited, especially, you know, he's like, I want to do 3D models. How do I get better facade data? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's all about flying those orbital and free flight oblique missions in addition to a 2D mission, in addition to a cross hatching 70 degree mission. And then really what you're doing is you're processing those missions separately and then tying them together in post-processing to really get the best of every single part of your model. Right. Um, and you really can't do that with a lot of cloud processing softwares. And You just don't have the bandwidth. Not You, you just can't do it, period. Yeah, yeah, it's just not possible. Gotcha. So most of the interfaces just don't allow for it. Um, and that also brings up, you know, there are multiple ways to get measurements as well. And manual tie points is definitely one of the better ways to do that. Um, and I'm not sure that in a lot of cloud processing softwares that you can do that. You definitely can get measurements mm -hmm. and how you get those measurements could really provide, how do I say this? If you're not taking your measurements in a systematic way where you, you have a system to pick out each pixel of the corner of what you're trying to measure, you're never going to get um, uh, accurate measurements from one map to the next to the next. Right. And manual tie points really, really helps out with like, you know, blowing up the photo down to the pixel and pff, I want to measure from right there. Yeah, so that's powerful stuff. So, so his question, the beginning of his question was, what is the best way to do these inspections? And, and uh, to the point where I think he was asking, is it just taking pictures? Or is it using video? Oh, or yeah. is I it using around, models? Sorry. Well, you kind of just went you went to the models, and so I guess my question is, is, would that be your answer? That's the best way to do it. Well, I don't think that that is the answer. I think it really depends on, number one, what you're inspecting, number two, who the client is, and number three, what the deliverable is, because I've and seen... And what they need. Exactly. Yeah. I've seen... You know, things like drone base, where they're, you're just taking a bunch of pictures of houses and that's it. I've seen other claims inspectors. In fact, we are training a group in Wisconsin here soon where they've got a bunch of claims and risk assessors and they're learning how to model the, the roofs, you know, and mm -hmm. they want help modeling the buildings um, because they can get 
you know, measurements of the holes from hail, whereas just pictures can't provide that. So um, I think that it really depends on who the client is, what the deliverable is, but it also depends on, you know, if you're just out there getting pictures, obviously you're probably only going to get paid a much smaller amount right. than if you're out there and you're, you're making a, a model and map of the house. Mm -hmm. But then for a lot of you who are listening to this, who are business owners, who are in the claims industry, um, who are in the insurance industry, you've got to be really careful about who is providing data to you, not only for the ownership of the data, that's kind of an obvious uh, issue, but who are these companies having fly your properties? Because if you're looking for data um, below the overhang, so you know how a lot of these gable houses have these roofs and then there's this like little overhang? Yeah. If you want that data, you have you mean to- underneath? Mm -hmm, yeah. You have to fly the house in a very specific way. And a lot of these automated drone jobbing companies are not there yet. They, do, they have not figured out the system for getting that data. Um, and it also is going to provide- um, how do I say this? If you can get the data under there, the data across the entire project in itself is going to be absolutely spectacular. But the other thing too is that if they're doing these inspections and they're doing modeling without ground control points, it's almost useless. Hmm. It's a literally almost useless because you have nothing to scale the map to and you have nothing to geo-reference where that map is in space. Interesting. By the way, do, do you guys go through a lot of what you're talking about in the in-person yes. mapping classes? Mm -hmm. Yes. It's a great um, place to obviously go learn all that. It is. And as of right now, we're actually recording this podcast a, a, like five days prior to when it's actually airing. Um, I'm heading out to Houston tomorrow to go do a mapping class. We're probably going to do one more or two more before the fly-in, maybe. Yeah. Um, and then we're going to do two mapping exercises at the fly-in, and I'm actually going to incorporate a class at the fly-in itself. Um, you know, one of the things that we kind of discussed in the last couple of weeks is that we want to offer a multiple track uh, so that if people want to focus on the creative aspect of drones, they can do that. If they want to focus on... Um, the more technical aspect of drones, they can do that. Sure. Um, puts a big burden on drone you because we have to, you know, have a lot more instructors um, come and discuss what they're doing. But I think that it's really valuable information. And the other thing, too, is that, you know, we'll go back to the beginning of what I said in response to your question, that it depends on the type of things that they are inspecting. Right. You know, with bridges, you're using terrestrial photography and terrestrial photography in photogrammetry has to be processed in a very specific type of way. Mm -hmm. It's very different from all the other type of processing that you do. You actually rip data off the photos. Um if you're doing inspections of, of towers that are really thin, you know, skinny poles, you've got to do a very specific type of facade mapping. There's a, you know, a very specific type of application that does that really, really well. And you gotta, um, you've got to plan it differently, mm -hmm. the way you're going to acquire the data, et cetera. Exactly, which is yeah. why, you know, we've had this really awesome in-person class and it's three days of nothing but mapping and we're going to keep doing it. But at the fly-in, we're going to really test people's ability to map as at the fly-in, we're going to have a crime scene at the fly-in where two or three vehicles have come into contact with each other because they were all having a great day and they're like, I got an idea, let's hit each other. So uh, we'll have that. <laughs> but in addition, we're also going to have a mobile command center that someone is going to have to map because imagine that you're at a, an emergency disaster response, communications are down and Verizon is calling Skyward asking for a pilot to find out why communications are down. They need a quick visual inspection of their tower and you're there to map it. So um, it's really going to test people's ability for terrestrial mapping, 3D mapping, and uh, vertical facade mapping, which I'm really excited about. But going back to his question, you know, it really depends on the client what type of deliverables that they seek to need. And sometimes you have to become really familiar and explore each different type of deliverable. And to the point where you have the opportunity or you can take advantage of the opportunity to upsell, mm -hmm. not just for the sake of more money, but for the sake of giving them more value and more benefit. True. Mm -hmm. Yeah. True. Now, the other thing, too, is that I don't know how a lot of these claims processors actually measure damage in relation to the cost that they'll pay out. But with something like Pix4D and Pix4D model, if I get a really good 3D map and I actually go, I upload my model to Pix4D model and I go in and I annotate each volume from a whole, it will actually list all of the annotations on the map. 
And then you can add all of those up to see the actual square area of our square footage of a damaged roof or damaged walls and like an actual calculation of the volumetric space yeah. that was taken from houses, which could actually end up being a significant amount of work. And if they're just like, oh, well, there's four holes per square foot, so we're just going to pay out for a new roof. You know, I don't know how much time and money they're actually going to spend doing it, but in places like Colorado Springs where uh, my, how do I say this? My, so I'm getting married, so my fiance's mm -hmm. mom's brother has a house in Colorado Springs. We go up there for Thanksgiving every other year. Mm -hmm. And uh, his house, or not his house, but the house is down the street. I mean, it's like literally if God paved the road of not destroying these houses, he's in it. And then everyone else around him really? has like See, completely destroyed homes. <laughs> that's a really interesting application for this in the sense that we're talking about, you know, what real value would there be for one house? and spending the money to model it, et cetera. But if you could create a map or a model of a neighborhood mm -hmm. and then zoom in on a particular roof, then I could really see the value of this. Because oh, yeah. you could take 100 houses or whatever it is, maybe that's too many, and have it in one map. And you could do a lot of work from your desk figuring out yeah. what the claims should be, et cetera. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I'd be surprised if they're not doing that. I think soon. some people are, some people are not. Yeah. So... But, but as you're talking to people, and obviously in your training that you're going to be doing for claims adjusters, um, this is the kind of thing that you might bring up to them in terms of scaling the benefits of this mapping stuff. True. Yeah. And again, if it's scaling, this is why, again, it's so important going back to the FAA talks, uh, which those should be on the website for members here very soon. You can watch all the talks uh, that I attended at the FAA 2018 symposium, you can see uh, what's going on in the regulatory world. And one of the things that's in there is the BVLOS waivers. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, talking about scaling operations, it would be very difficult to scale operations in the way that you're talking about um, without a BVLOS waiver. Because if you could fly a LIDAR vehicle mm -hmm. um, up to a mile away from you, which really isn't that far, you could really knock out large swaths of neighborhood in right. hours. Right. So, I mean, you're cutting the the workload on that significantly. Mm -hmm. So at an cool. order of magnitude, right? Yeah, but anyway, I do want to say thank you for the shout out for the value of the membership that you're getting, and I uh, love your Australian accent. That he probably didn't hear the rules of the accents from probably not. Hundreds that was of a shows while ago. back, <laughs> but he, he wins. He does. For today. He, he does. So far for 2018, <laughs> he's got the best accent. That's right. So. <laughs> anyway, uh, if you have a question and an accent, go to askdroneu.com. If you have a question and no accent, that's okay. Make one up, askdroneu.com. Um, <laughs> that is going to do it for us today. Don't forget, if you need a landing pad, those are still available on the website. Just go to thedroneu.com. Click the banner at the top. They're still available, although we are going to be changing that design. I'm very excited about that. So I know you are. I've been working on it significantly. <laughs> so anyway. You mappers are going to love the new design. Yes, mappers will love the new design. Uh, anyway, that is going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You. Ask Drone You.